Hi guys, welcome back to another video at Trader's Journey uh, where we cover off all the beginner beginner information that is needed to begin options trading and today we've got an exciting video of where I first began really in my trading journey and it was learning how to chart a graph properly. So um, what I'm going to be covering off today is exactly how I begin charting a graph and what do I look for when I chart a graph and I'll be talking through all the details and I'll try and make it as clear and concise as possible for you guys but if, in the meantime if anyone's got any questions once I've posted this video leave it in the comment section below and I should be able to help every single one of you chart a graph correctly so let's get straight into this video so as you can see here I've got uh, the S&P 500 up on this chart and you can see there's several lines which I've done to chart this graph but what I'm going to do for you guys is reset this completely um, I've, I've been charting this this graph for over a year but there's highlighting all the key levels so I'm going to reset this chart and start again for you guys and show you exactly how I chart this graph. Now a lot of people are probably wondering what is charting useful for and charting is, is key for setting support and resistance levels which I'll get into further on in this video. So let me just go ahead and reset this chart. So it looks like you have to remove every single one, which isn't the best. But um, what's good is if anyone isn't familiar with trading view, it actually allows you to save all your history of, um, of of graphs and what you've done and illustrated on the graph. So if I click remove drawings, there we go. So here we are, we've resetted the chart and this is the S&P 500 weekly chart. Um, but I will be talking you through exactly how I go about charting the graph. So just before I do so, get before I get into this video, I just want to let you guys know of the whole purpose of charting a graph is by setting key levels on this pricing, on the share price chart or on indexes or on indices or whatever you're looking to trade, whether it be Forex, stocks or whatever it might be. Charting is very useful for creating key levels which we which we they are otherwise known as support and resistance levels. So for example, let us talk about a support level. So I'm going to just create a, a support level here. Now what you can see that has happened in this particular support level, the reason why we call it support is the share price has come down and literally bounced off that support level and gone back up. So it's almost a rejection of a price point and, and a continuation of a previous trend. That is what we call a support line there. Now, if we talk about a resistance line, let me give you an example, a quick example of a, a resistance. And here is a clear example of a resistance where the price has gone up and it's resisted that price level, rejected and it's come back down. Now it's come back down to a previous support level where it's hit it and it's rejected and it's bounced back up. And what's interesting here about resistance and support levels is you will see in the future time and time again, it will bounce off of those support and resistance lines. This is why key levels are so important in charting and in trading in general. Now what you can see is that resistance hit, it went back up and it touched the previous previous resistance level so it bounced off the support came back up and hit the resistance again it came back down and formed a new support level which is right there which as you can see is a, a previous key level for previous price points and for future price points it bounced back up broke through resistance and created a new resistance so I'm just going to go ahead and remove these just to give you guys an example. I hope that has made sense. If anyone's got any questions on support and resistance, leave it in the comment section below and I'll get back to every single one of you. So let's go ahead and start um, actually charting the graph and explaining what I exactly look for. Now what I usually chart, I usually chart on a four hour chart at the maximum. Some people go one day, some people go one week, but for me it's it makes it more, it's more appropriate for the, my trading strategy and how, for, I mean if you're looking to, to create leaps or you're looking to trade long-term positions over a month, then potentially a day, a week and a month chart is useful for you to chart on. But for me, using my trading strategy and what I tend to do is I always start on the four hour chart. 
So as you can see here, this is the four hour chart. I tend to try and go um, about a year to two years out. As you can see, um, this is 2020. It's, it's reaching far, far back as, uh, I mean, I mean, one year is plenty. Um, so this, this is what I would usually start with charting, a four hour chart with a, about a one year to two year span. So as we can see here, this is the full chart of four hours all the way dated back to October 19th, which is roughly a year. So what I would begin in doing is in setting my key levels. And to start, I would set the bottom, which is the lowest that the price has ever been in that past year. And then I would I'd set a, a line at the highest key point, highest point that the share price has ever been or the chart you're looking at, the highest price has ever been in that year. So as we can see, the highest SPY, based on my charting here, the highest SPY has ever been is 35871, and the lowest it's been is 21844. So those are key levels for, for one reason, and one reason only is if it generally, if a price point breaks the highest level or breaks below the lowest level, it will continue and make a larger move towards the bottom. And if it breaks the highest level, it will continue to make higher highs and generally will be a, a, a large move. Now that is just the general idea of it and that's not to say it will definitely happen but the general idea is if it breaks the highest level or the highest all-time highs it will generally make a large move. If it breaks the all-time lows it will generally make a, a big move lower lower. So um, that is generally how we begin charting the graph. We, we indicate the highest point, the lowest point on a year span. Um, and like I said, I only like to go out for roughly a year on the chart as anything older than that is, is probably not useful for your trading as so many levels have been set prior to a year. But if you were to go to um, further further than a year, it would only just create more, more accurate sort of strategic price points and and that would only help you in your trading so if you have got if you have got the time to do that and you you do want to go that extra mile then there's no reason why you shouldn't now generally on the four hour chart i will it's it's quite easy to to find key areas that are um, key levels so now this is gets into the more interesting part and i hope you guys are paying attention to this now when i when i look to chart levels anywhere in between the all-time high and the all-time low i will look for price points where price has rejected or price has yeah price has rejected more than once so in other words let's have a, an example of that right so here i would chart this as a, a, a key level now the reason why is we can see it's the it it's touched here, it's touched here, so it's touched twice, it's touched three times, four times, five, potentially six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that has touched this key level more than eleven times, I'd say, because we're looking at a four hour chart. On a one hour chart, it may have hit that line several, several times. So that for me is an extremely key level for SP 500, which is 29850. So you can see whenever that line has touched, the S&P 500 has made a large move to the downside or a large move to the upside. And that is illustrated here on 6th of March, 2020, broke and it went all the way down. And here in on the 27th of May, it broke to the upside and it made a large move up. So let's look for other key levels on this four hour chart. So this looks this looks like a key level because it's hit it once there. And when I say when it's hit it once or twice or whatever, I'm looking for the very edge of the candle to have touched that key level, not through it, not the middle of it, right at the end of the candle, either the top of the candle or the bottom of the candle kind of t could have touched because here we can see the top of the candle is touched, top of the candle is touched, but here we can see the bottom of bottom of the candle is touched so it can either be the top or the bottom of the candle it doesn't matter but if it's touched the end of the candle that counts as one touch so here for instance this is touched once twice three times four five maybe multiple times in this area in the zone of july and previously it is touched several times as well so that 
what that is what makes it a key level is when a price point has been touched several several times and when it has it's either rejected bounced off it and created a large move and this in particular is another key level which is 32331 on the S&P 500. So I would very quickly look at a high level on the 4 hour chart. I wouldn't take much time on the 4 hour chart because it is um, it is obviously the 4 hour chart where big moves happen and it's, it's obviously not as accurate as, as other charts such as the 1 hour 30 minutes and going down towards the 1 minute chart where we see small incremental movements in the price. So I mean I wouldn't make so many so many key levels on a four hour chart as it is it is um if you are unsure on the four hour chart if you're looking at it accurately you can zoom in to see if it's touched touched the the end of the candle accurately so you can move this you can move the key levels i would like i said guys previously i would highly recommend trading view for charting your graphs i will leave that in the comments in the description box below for you guys to check out this website very very good for charting and um, really accurate as i said as, as accurate as it comes when it comes to charting so as you can see guys i've charted about six or seven key levels here and and to be honest i wouldn't i wouldn't spend like i said as much time on this four hour chart because um it, it won't be as detailed or as accurate as a one hour chart. So after going through the four hour chart, I will now downscale. I won't bother with the two hour or three hour. We'll go straight from the four hour chart to the one hour chart. And the one hour chart will provide you with some more candles, obviously. Um, four, account, four hour candles are obviously much larger and longer. So when you skip to the one hour chart, you may have to zoom in a bit further. So you may, your chart may not be exactly one year. Um, just to try and get any more details. Now, you may or may not see more key levels on a one hour chart compared to the four hour chart. You may completely see, you might not see anything. For instance, on this spy chart now, I'm not seeing that many additional key levels. There might be one here. Um, 31901 seems to be quite a key level here. Um, so I'm going to chart that line. I may chart one between here if I see more touch points and to be honest I I do see a touch point there but it's it's not clear on this graph for me whether that's a key level so I would I may miss that one out so I mean just feel how see how you feel if you feel like it's a very it's a, a key level um, there's no harm in charting it because it will just help with your trading so yeah, so I might, act, even though I can only see one touch point here, it does seem like a, a key level for, for big moves. So I will chart this this amount here. And to be honest, I can't see that many more. See, now what's interesting is when the S&P 500 reaches new price points, such as what it is now up at 3, just recently touched the all-time high of 3.5871, these key levels won't really matter as much so if you're if you're looking to make a, a quick start into the markets maybe it's not useful for you to trade such old price points because they're no longer relevant and i think as the price if the price tends to move down or yeah moves lower than than this current price point then yes maybe it is now particularly useful to level create levels of these previous price price levels but um if you're looking to trade within the next week and you're not looking at such old price points maybe it's not worth your time um, but for me for greater accuracy and you never know what the markets might do i i would always recommend trading these old price points so like you see like you can see guys i have charted this successfully um, obviously they might not be accurate when you go down to other charts you might you might try to move these to more accurate price points there's no harm in moving them if they're not accurate on the previous four hour charts so moving on guys i would go from the one hour and i'll work all the way down to the one minute now as you go down in the the chart time time points from 30 minutes all the way down to one minute you will notice that you shouldn't need to chart a whole year's worth of price levels. It's not worth, it's simply worth not worth your time because when you're trading one minute, you will generally be scalping and making day-to-day -day trades. You'll generally be day trading and um, 
when you use the half an hour to one hour, you'll generally be swing trading. So it's not worth your time to be charting price points using a one minute for a whole year span. It's better for you to just chart a one minute um, maybe in the last three to four months. So for instance, in this 30 minute chart, I'm only going back to April 2020 and again, searching for other price points. Again, you may not find any, you may find some. If you can, just try and chart those price points. This one here. This one here. And as you can see recently, there's just been a continuation of upper trends, so not so much to chart. This looks like a key level, but I'll wait to see what that looks like on or I can zoom in here and what does it look like? It looks like there's definitely a key level here. There we go. So it's not as it's not completely accurate, but like I said, as you go into the smaller time frames, you will see these levels more accurately and you can adjust your uh, can adjust your chart so that it hits these candles just on the end, like so. Um so yeah, let's, and then I'll continue to work all the way down, all the way to the one minute. And like I said, I'll be zoomed in much further on the five minute. You're, on, you're only able to go back a month or so. On the 15 minute, you can go back a lot more. But like I said, if you don't see any key points, just move on. Don't waste your time um, trying to find key levels if they're not there. Um, this is definitely a key level here. We've seen a strong rejection, strong support. There it is. Again, there's a strong support here. And we can see it. It's so interesting because you 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 mark it once and you can see it several times it's hit that price level. So it's such a strong resistance or support. If it's hit it more than twice, more than three times, you know that's a very strong key level for a particular chart example here this is definitely another key level look how many times it's hit it and broken down so that's a key area so guys i hope that's provided you with a good background and good information to begin charting graphs this is obviously one of the first things i learned when trading and it's essential that every trader knows how to chart i will create more videos on technical analysis and how to how to look for good trades to enter and how to exit good trades. I will be providing that analysis on future videos, but I just wanted to start from the very beginning um, of this educational series. And the first one is obviously charting. And I think everyone should be able to perfect charting as it's such a, it's such a key area um, that every trader needs to know before beginning to trade. And I think I think it's easy for people to look at other people's charts and, and assume price levels. But once you've charted it yourself, you can gain so much more, um, so much more value in your own charting. And I think it's important for everyone to learn this. So if anyone's got any questions, leave that in the comment section below. I've hoped this video has helped you guys in your trading journey. And um, I will look to catch you all on the future videos. If you haven't as yet, please be sure to subscribe and um, please be sure to give my Instagram a follow at tradersjourney underscore official. I'll leave all the links which I've used to create this video in the description box below and I will catch you all on the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Goodbye.